What is going on everyone, Razor Middle here, back with another challenge video here on the channel. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can stay up to date on all the live streams and other videos such as this. It truly helps out, and I appreciate all your support. Anywho, with the Isle of Armor expansion pass being released last week, over 100 old Pokemon have been added to the game, bringing back many fan favorites and spicing up the game and getting everyone excited for future expansion. Because I am a man of the memes, what better Pokemon to do a challenge run with than everyone's sleep paralysis demon, Miltank. Miltank has a huge reputation in the Pokemon fandom, mainly due to one trainer who shall not be named. This Pokemon has kicked my butt more times than I can count, so how lovely would it be to conquer my fears and become the world's greatest Miltank master? Today I'll be seeing if I can beat Pokemon Shield with only Miltank. Miltank is a good chonk, with surprisingly good stats for a single stage mon. Miltank's space stat is 490 with excellent speed, HP, and defense, plus pretty solid attack and special defense. The big problem here is going to be Miltank's special attack at an abysmal 40. Since Miltank is a pure normal type, its only weakness is the fighting type, and its immune to ghost moves, everything else is neutral. I want to make this as difficult as possible since I have an unfortunate reputation of being a terrible battler, so I know this will be a great way to help me improve, and I hope you can all cut me some slack if I, you know, get demolished. Now let's do a quick rundown of the rules. I can only use Miltank on my team as just discussed. I can't use any items in battle, only held items. And lastly, no hacking or glitches are allowed to give me any advantages. Now without any more delay, let the challenge begin. It all began when the Fire Nation attacked. Mm -mm. I mean, when Hopped walked into my house. We begin with the usual stuff. A mysterious doggo appears, Leon thinks we're on hallucinogenics and doesn't believe us, he gives us a starter, and our parents are oddly happy to let us go roam the world with raging animals on the loose. Since I can barely operate a computer, let alone hack the game, I progress with a Sobble up until the wild area where I can get access to trading and trade over a Miltank egg. The egg hatches, and I nickname Miltank Chonk because its defense and HP are going to carry us over the finish line. I already know. We scurry our way through the wild area and into Motostoke where Hop and I I register for the gym challenge and head off to the hotel before the ceremony the next day. Sonia asks us if we want to hear some history about a statue and I accidentally click the button for her to tell us the full story, so cue up the circus music and get me some clown makeup. Before I can go to my hotel and take a fat nap, some hooligans are causing commotion in the lobby and we beat them up. After a level grind, Chonk is now at a respectable 17 to their level 9 mon, so a few stomps get the job done. We meet the girl they're big fans of, Barney, and honestly, if this isn't some social message from Game Freak about obsessive stan culture for celebrities, then I don't know what is. Team Yell is like if TMZ was an evil Pokemon team. Anyhow, the next morning we head to the stadium where a big hullabaloo takes place and we're formally introduced to all the gym leaders in the region minus one. We also meet Chairman Rose and Oleana who work for the Pokemon League or something and I don't really know, they look hella shady to me. Outside the stadium now we get on our merry way and head to the first gym over in Turfield. But this is a Pokemon game after all so you know we got three pit stops on the way first beginning with the rival battle with Hop. Again, the level difference here really helps carry us but Chonk does have a great advantage knowing Rollout and picks off Rookity and Scorbunny fairly quickly. Oh, and he had a Wooloo. Yeah, that got destroyed too. Then pit stop number two happens on Route 3 where Sonya tells us about a factory right over there that's inaccessible. She was really like, oh yeah, you see that over there? Yeah, you're not a part of the club, you can't get in. Okay, bye. So then she leaves. Cool, Sonia. Cool. Then we make our way downtown, face his pass, and we're homebound to Galar Mine number one, and this jerk confronts us, basically telling us we suck and he's the bee's knees. Of course, this means we have to battle and knock some sense into him, and Chonk uses Stomp on Solosis, Gothita, and Hatena, taking about half damage, but no biggie overall. Outside the cave, we officially make our acquaintance with Milo, the man without a nose, uh, I mean, Turfield's gym leader. Then Sonya and I chit-chat about some space monster and Galar's history, and then I go wrangle up some woos in the Turfield gym before stepping out onto the field and gear up for battle. Milo leads with Gossflirt, and one stomp flinches it, then one more stomp faints it, and we're still at full health. Out next is Eldegloss, and we Dynamax alongside it to give us the most powerful offensive and defensive strategy. Unfortunately, however, three max strikes leave this puffball on one HP, and Milo's Eldegloss is able to hit one last max overgrowth on us to finish this off. At a rematch, I slap in an item that I'm blanking on the name of, but it boosts normal moves. Then things don't don't start off as good as they did last time, although we knock out Elagloss and we did take some damage on our end. Luckily, but also weirdly, neither of our attacks do enough damage in the three terms, and the Dynamaxing wears off. After several back and forth, Stomp does more damage than Leafage does to us, and Chonk and I pick up the win. We get a fancy badge, shake hands, and head on outside the city onto our next destination. We're stopped halfway there when Team Yell is harassing some dude, and we gotta teach them both a lesson. After they get schooled, the man rewards us with a bike, but not soon after we get stopped again by Hop, who wants to battle. We do the exact same strategy that 
what we did in Motostok against him, and use Rolla against his Wulu, which gradually gets stronger each turn, making it easy to one-shot his Corvusquire and Raboot. Now in Holberry, Chairman Rose makes it clear to us he has no sense of fashion, and Oleana is there kicking his fans away. We meet with Nessa over by the lighthouse, and she invites us to challenge her at the gym. We accept, of course, scurrying through the gym puzzle and heading out to the field. Nessa leads with Goldeen and immediately gets Riggedy wrecked by Chonk, and same goes to Aracuda, but we do take a tad bit of damage this time. Dynamax time for her Dreadnought, and I forgot like an idiot to Dynamax, and I'm guessing you all know what happened. Oh, and then in the rematch, I lost again, but I did Dynamax, people let it be known, I tried my best. Third time's the charm now, and I finally win. The battle was similar to the last two, with the only trouble being her Dreadnought. I stalled one turn so she could activate my bear to heal me up, then on my last turn of Dynamaxing, Dreadnought was back to normal, and I capitalized on that to win. Nessa is shook at first, but like the legend she is, she accepted defeat with grace, and I got badge number two. Outside the stadium now, Oleana summons us to a local restaurant where we get some long story about Dynamaxing, meanwhile, I'm too busy enjoying my soup. I wander over to Galar Mine number 2 where Beat is his usual angie self and tries to fight us. He is the exact same team as before with the addition of Galarian Ponyta and we make quick work of his psychic squad. Afterwards, because we cannot have nice things, we are stopped 80 times to battle trainers, fight Team Yell, talk to Hop, and meet the next gym leader Kabu. Seriously, I was just mashing A here, not gonna lie. Back in Motostoke again, it's light so we get checked in at the hotel where Marnie asks us for a quick battle and I accept, of course. A couple had butts with a rollout offensive knock out all of her mons with not much trouble, but her more peko was pretty hangry, I can confirm that. Next morning we wakey wakey and head to the gym, finish the little challenge required for us to enter, and then go to the field alongside Kabu. And guess what? I told you all I have skills, I swept his entire team only using rollout. It was so powerful by the fifth turn that even though I couldn't Dynamax, it destroyed his G-Max Center Scorch in one shot. I get the gym badge and I head out. Kabu is joined by Nessa and Milo in bidding Hop and I a farewell as we head into the wild area and off to Hammerlock. We don't stay long in the city, but before we head out, we meet up with Chairman Rose and Leanne, and then are instructed to go find Hammerlock's gym leader and Sonya. After we do this, we get a quick history lesson about Galar because we haven't had enough of those, right? And then we finally continue on our travels. Outside Hammerlock, Team Yell is causing a mess per usual, so I teach them both a lesson because apparently Hop can't help or anything. Thanks, friend. With the silly Coper saved, I move along trying to avoid every trainer possible because I truly cannot be bothered. But of course, once the first trainer spots me, she has a Ponyard who I have zero moves good against. I take a big L and are able to sneak past her when I come back, then finally make my way to Stonesight after what seemed like 80 years just to walk 10 steps. Right before we make our way into the gym, Hop suddenly decides he only wants to battle against us and not the evil team we just talked to, but because we're nice, we accept. But like what has happened every battle with him before, he is absolutely no match for any of us in any way, shape, or form. After the battle, Opal, a gym leader we'll fight in the future, is not practicing safe social distancing and starts talking to me. She gives us Alistair's league card, and wouldn't you know, we head into Stoneside's gym to go battle against Alistair. The gym puzzle leaves me dizzier than a confused ray, but once completed, it's time for a good old-fashioned gym battle. For this battle, we have both a major advantage and disadvantage being Chonk's typing. None of Alistair's ghost moves will work on Chonk, but the same is for all our normal type moves being ineffective as well. For this battle, I taught Chonk Zen Headbutt to help us fight against her G-Max Gengar, but first we gotta deal with her other three mons. Unfortunately, we lose the first battle against Alistair, but in the rematch, our luck is much better. Granted, we did shove a bunch of candies down Chonk's throat to level her up in the rematch. In the rematch, we're at half health by the time it's time to face off against her last Pokemon, G-Max Gengar. One Max Mindstorm nearly finishes off his Gengar, and Chonk eats the attacks that come his way and isn't damaged that much. One more Max Mindstorm finishes off his Gengar and we earn our fourth gym badge. Outside the gym, Sonya comes up and brings us to the famous mural in Stoneside, where Beat interrupts and decides he wants to destroy it. We battle him and obliterate his entire team, and afterwards Chairman Rose catches him trying to use his own Kaparaja to destroy the mural. Beat gets his gym challenger status revoked and is escorted away by Chairman Rose, only on it in the league staff. Once they leave, the mural crumbles, conveniently hiding a similar statue we saw earlier in one of the hotels where Sonya gave us a history lesson. She sets out to do some more research while we navigate our way through the Glimwood Tango and up and over to the Balanlea Gym. Here in the Balanlea Gym now, Opal greets us and she's hosting auditions where we must battle other trainers to see if we're a suitable replacement for her when she retires. Don't tell the principal, but I look up the cheat sheet to answer her quiz questions correctly, which helps boost our stats and make the audition battles go quick. Out on the field now, Opal is waiting for us and we gear up for battle. We start the battle against her Galarian Weezing, where I accidentally answer her question wrong, making my speed fall and get pushed down to half health. Up against her Mawile now, where three Shadow Balls knock it out, but having taken three turns, I am damaged a little more as you would expect. In red health now against her third Pokemon Togekiss, I Dynamax to boost my HP and make me stronger knowing I'm on the verge of losing. Sadly though, her Togekiss is faster than me and one Air Slash finishes me off. In our second battle, I lose again. 
but they do say third time's the charm, right? So I make my way to the field once again with a slightly higher level chunk. I get lucky with some critical hits and actually answering the questions right this time to earn boosted stats. Also with this, her Weezing and Mawai only do about a quarter damage this time. Against her Togekiss, one body slam paralyzes it and Chonk capitalizes on this to hit it again with only a teeny bit more damage done to us. Then we Dynamax against her Gigantamax El Creamy and two Max Strikes finish it off real quick, helping us secure Gym Badge number 5. Opal is shocked she lost and yeets her cane, but magically gets it back when we're presented with our Gym Badge. Five Gym Badges down now, our metal is looking pretty nice now, but we still got three more stops to go before the Pokemon League. Once outside the gym now, we escort Opal over to Hammerlock where she goes to run some errands. This is where she spots Bead, who's dressed in all pink and purple, which immediately catches Opal's eye. She kidnaps him, I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm, um, I mean, she takes him back to Bal and Leia for some fairy type training. Then we chit chat with Sonya and Leon where a disturbance is detected and they go to investigate. You know, side tangent here, but I love Leon because he does all the busy work that Game Freak totally could have made into an hour side quest to prolong gameplay. Thank you, Leon, for doing all the hard work for us that no one else ever did in the past seven generations generations. You, sir, are a legend. Outside Hammerlock now and traveling to Surchester for gym number 6, Hop battles us on the bridge where he finally has a team good enough to go against us. I have never been so happy to lose in my life. Thank you, Hop, for finally getting yourself together. In a rematch, Chunk is left hanging on at 12 HP, but our speediness allows us to pick off the last Pokemon Bolton and give us the win. We then travel through a very dry desert-like area, which suddenly turns into Antarctica the second we get outside the Rubble Fortress place we're in. We go straight for the gym and complete the most painfully annoying gym puzzle ever created. It's there that once we're done and on the field to go battle gym leader number 6, Melanie, that we're destroyed not once, not twice, but three times and I'm left scrambling to figure out a strategy on how to beat her. Her Ice Q is the main challenge here with the ability Ice Face that lets it restore its protective blockhead and not let us do any damage until we destroy it again. I decide to overlevel Chonk even more in hopes that it'll give us some more room to eat any attacks thrown our way with our great defensive stats. Plus, I taught Chonk some spicy new moves that I got from Ray Dens to help us out. In our final battle, Chonk is only taken down to about a quarter health by the time it's time to go against her G-Max Lapras. We Dynamax as well and stall each other with each of us only doing a little bit of damage to each other. I'm down to 15 HP and one last Max Knuckle finishes off her Lapras. That was definitely the hardest gym battle yet, so I gleefully take my gym badge and take my booty right on out of the gym to get as far away as possible. Sonia, Hop, and I meet up at a local restaurant to talk about more Galar history and whatnot, and then Hop and I do a quick battle where he beats us again, twice. Okay Hop, I know I was smack talking earlier when your team was trash, but bro help me out here and let me win please. In the third and final battle, we're left barely clinging on to life at 2 HP as his last Pokemon Pit Churchin is finished off. Outside of Sir Chester now, we fight off some Team Yell Grunts who are harassing the Doctor Dude again, and once we save him, he upgrades our bike so we can ride on water now. We ride some ways and head off to a weird looking abandoned city where the garage door is closed off, but Marnie helps sneak us in because this is actually where she lives with all of her Team Yell fans. Before we go in the city though, we battle against her and it's very easy since we have a fairy move and a fighting move which are super effective in one way or the other against all of her Pokemon. Officially in the city now, we get straight into the gym challenge since there's literally absolutely nothing else to do here otherwise. The Team Yell Grunts serve as the trial trainers for this gym and they're all easily defeated. When we finish with all that shenanigans, the remainder of the Team Yell Grunts are at a rock concert courtesy of the gym leader Piers. He tells us there's no Dynamaxing in this gym and we get straight into the battle. Honestly, going into this battle, this is probably the most confident I've been so far, and for good reason too since we're overleveled and have a good move pool to navigate through all of his Pokemon, even those dual types. He leads with Scrafty and one play rough finishes it off, while two body presses finishes off his obstacle being four times super effective each. His third Pokemon is Malamar, who we use player off on twice to knock it out. When he sends out his final Pokemon, we're only about a third of damage and things are looking good against his last Pokemon, Stunk Tank. Again, a player off and a body press easily knock it out despite Skunk Tank having the aftermath ability and taking us down to red health even after we kill it. But we still get the win, so who cares? A win is a win. This is finally our second gym battle with no losses. Thank you, Lord Helix. Let's get some hype. Outside there's a huge rumble and apparently Pokemon are Dynamaxing uncontrollably. Leon, our do-everything-himself champion, of course, saves the day and we don't even have to lift a finger. Seriously, we find out he's successful by scrolling through the news on our phone. You love to see it, people. In Hairlock now, we go to the gym and since it is a double battle gym, we are required to have a second Pokemon on our team. Since this obviously breaks the rules of the challenge, but I can't progress without adding someone to my team, I add the Litwick I caught from the Motosoak gym and enter. For these battles, I will not let Litquick attack at all, so this remains a mill tank only challenge. To prevent Litquick from doing anything, Thing, I'll just keep force feeding him paralyzed heals that'll do nothing since you know he's not paralyzed. Also speaking of, I'm absolutely terrified of this gym battle since it is essentially a two on one fight with Rayhan. So to deal with the difficulty of this gym, I level up Chonk a lot to help her tough out the strong hits. She also knows Blizzard now replacing the electric move we had to use back when we battled Melanie. Anyways, with all that mess taken care of, all the trainers are destroyed and we head out to the field for the battle. Rayhan leads with Flygon and Gigalith, and knowing as Gigalith has the sturdy ability and wanting to get that sandstorm stirring Flygon out as fast as I can, I use Blizzard to 
to hit them both. Flygon goes down and out comes the Sandaconda next. For the next turn I use Body Press on Gigalith to finish it off, but Sandaconda paralyzes Chonk with Glare. Out next is a Gigantamax Duraludin and we Dynamax to give ourselves an equal fighting chance. Two Max Knuckles knock it out and on the last turn Chonk is unable to move since it's paralyzed but it's just us against Sandaconda now. Shockingly, Litwick is still alive at this point. Granted, he is paralyzed so I had to switch to using Antidotes. But on the last turn Sandaconda knocks Litwick out and Chonk beats up Sandaconda in stylish fashion to give us our final gym badge. Can you believe it? All the battles I've lost so far in this challenge run and I destroy Rehan of all people with ease. Outside the gym, Sonia is promoted to Galar's official professor after Professor Bagnolia gives her the honor. Then Leanne sends Hop and I off on our way to travel by train to Winden, home of the Pokemon League. We first have to travel up through snowy mountains before getting there, but once we do, we go straight to the stadium to begin our quest to become champion. Day one of the tournament has us facing off against other gym challengers to see who gets to advance to day two. Up first is our BFF gym challenger, Marnie. As you'd expect with her team being only dark type Pokemon, this battle is easy peasy. Combinations of body press and player off easily knock out her team with almost no damage taken on our end. Her GMAX Grimmsnarl is one-shotted and we advance to the next round. Round 2 sees us facing off against our other BFF Hop, who we know has grown into quite the strong trainer in our recent battles. While I am nervous of losing again, keep in mind I am a lot higher leveled against him for once, so things could be different here. His first three Pokemon, Double, Snorlax, and Pinchurchin all get one-shotted, but out comes his Corviknight, who we have no super effective moves against. I try to use Body Press, but it only does half damage, but thankfully his Corviknight uses Scary Face, which doesn't damage us at all, and we finish it off still with no damage taken to us. Outlast is a Cinderace who hits us hard with the Max Knuckle, especially so because I forgot to Dynamax as well, like an idiot. But still, despite taking quite a hit, two turns of Body Press leads us to victory. After all is said and done, we advance to Day 2 of the Champions Cup, and Hop takes his loss like a champ. Hours pass when we're at the hotel, and Leon hasn't returned to take us to dinner like he promised. Of course, we assume the worst no thanks to the fact that all of Chairman Rose's workers try uber hard to stop us from finding them. Come on now guys, we're kids. You try to stop us from doing something, and we'll do it anyways for the giggles of it. Then once we get the monorail key from the worker, we head up to Rose Tower, beat down some more workers who try stopping us, and finally make our way to the top four to meet Leon. But of course, Oleana is there to stop us from going any further, and surprisingly, but also not surprisingly because you all know I'm a pro at losing, she beats us once and then we come back for a rematch. In the rematch, we're able to avoid a will o -Wisp burn by Frostless and knock it out, alongside her Milotic and Salazzle, but Salazzle actually burns us. With nothing to lose and no time to waste, I Dynamax against her second to last Pokemon so I can get a stat boost and one-shot her Zarina. Then with her last Pokemon Gigantamax Garboder, we hang on with five. Count it, 5 HP, but are able to knock it out with 2 max strikes. Then with all this done, we finally find Leon who's talking with Chairman Rose about something super secret. Leon tells us not to worry, apologizes for being late, and takes us to go get some dinner. The next morning, it's time for Day 2 of the Champions Tournament, and we'll be facing off against Galar's Gym Leaders. Before we get started though, Bead crashes the party ready to introduce himself to the world as the new Fairy-type Gym Leader. While not an official match of the tournament, we accept regardless. Two body presses finish off his Mawile, one play rough and body slam finish off his Gardevoir and Rapid Ash respectively and uplast is his G-Max Hatterene. I don't even bother Dynamax in since we've barely taken any damage and two body slams knock it out. After the battle, the audience cheers B to continue being a gym leader and for once he shows an emotion other than anger, which we love to see. After all this sideshow is done, the rail tournament is on and our round one opponent is Nessa. For this battle, I rely heavily on using body slam, which one shots everything except for her Glisspot, who keeps using its ability of emergency exit after Nessa heals it. Then uplast is her Gigantamax Dreadnought, who I don't even bother Dynamaxing for since we're doing pretty good health-wise. Two body press are super effective and leads us to victory. Round 2 is up next and has us squaring off against our spooky friend, Alistair. Chonk has Zen headbutt again to help us against her Gengar and Alistair leads off with Dustnor. We easily knock it out but his Chandelier burns us before we knock that out too. His Poltegeist is an absolute nightmare that keeps stalling with Protect to make our burn whittle down our health, but eventually we knock it out. With only 50 HP left and only 2 Pokemon left on the side, I risk it for the Biscuit and Dynamax. His Cursula is one-shotted and we knock down his GMAX Gengar quickly with a Max Mindstorm to advance to the final round. Then with the Healed Squad, we make our way to the field one last time and see that Rayhan is our final opponent before the champion. He leads with Torko and we take care of that swiftly along with his Turtonator, but because I only have physical moves, I take damage from Turtonator after he spams Shell Trap. Luckily with us having a fair move and ice move, his Gudra and Flygon are easily one-shotted by them respectively. Outlast is his G-Max Draladin, where we each hit each other with a Max Knuckle, where I'm left barely hanging on and he's less than half health from fainting too. With our speed advantage though, we get the first and last hit of the battle and finish off his Draladin for the win. Now with all that done, it's champion time. But not actually though, 
because Chairman Rose decides it's a good idea to unleash his master plan after acting all shady yesterday while chatting with Leon. So the match is postponed and the region low-key starts to blow up. Hop and I make our way back to our hometown and into the slumbering wield. We do this to see if the rumors of the Galar legendary Sonya has been researching is true and wouldn't you know we spot some legendary doggos. We pick up the rusted sword and shield and head over to Hammerlock where Chairman Rose is unleashing all of his mayhem. Down in the power plant looking area, Chairman Rose acts like a total sociopath, smiling and acting like what he's doing is good, so we gotta battle him and teach him a lesson. He leads with Escavalier where two body presses knock it out, but one megahorn from him takes out a quarter of our health. Ferrothorn, Quinkling, and Perserker are all easy hits, but Ferrothorn's ability causes us damage after we hit it. Outlast is his Gigantamax Caparaja, so we Dynamax Chonk to put us on an even playing field. Two Max Knuckles finish it off, and Caparaja's Max Steel Spike barely does a thing to us. After the battle, Chairman Rose gives us a slow, creepy clap and tells us his plan is probably foiled since Leon was busy catching the legendary Pokemon while we battled him. So Hop and I head upstairs to make sure, but believe it or not, Leon fails to catch it and we must battle it ourselves. Our first attempt fails and Eternus just transformed into something even creepier, but I don't even know how that's possible, but it did. We use the rusted sword and shield we got from the slumbering wield and out comes the legendary doggos from Galar's history. They come to help us out and protect Galar, but truthfully, they're the only ones really doing any work here against Eternatus. After they whittled down Eternatus' HP, Hop knocked out with 1 HP after doing nothing all battle, probably to fuel his own ego. Then we're petty as well and catch it instead of hop after we did nothing all battle as well, and now I own a legendary Pokemon caught inside a Pokeball. A day later and with the world back to normal, the Champion Cup is officially scheduled and we're ready to go. Except psych, we're not, because this team is a total pain in the rear end, plus I forgot to remove Eternatus from my party, so I basically had to lose anyways to follow the rules. Okay, now back for the rematch and I lose again. Okay, but for real now, I'm back for a rematch with a level 100 Chonk, and now I'm ready to go. He leads with Aegislash, Slash, who does a good bit of damage to us, but with it being in its attack form, we're able to fire punch it and one-shot it. Haxorus is taken down with one player up, and his Rhyperior is able to do a little bit of damage, but our super effective move is no match for him. His Roll Boom is taken out with two fire punches, and one player up beats his Dragapult no problem. Time for the grand finale now, and out comes his Gigantamax Charizard, so we Dynamax ourselves to give him a run for his money. Chonk is barely damaged by any of his attacks, nor the Sandstorm that he whips up, and we're only at about half damage still. I use two max hailstorms because that's the only move that'll do neutral damage and it takes out about half of Charizard's health. One more max hailstorm does the trick and we are officially the new champions of Galar. Well wow, what an intense 13 hours of total gameplay, but Chonk the Mill Tank was able to become the champion of the region with me. That was definitely a roller coaster of a journey, but in the end all of our failures eventually turned into victories and it's a true testament to never give up. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video, definitely let me know your thoughts on this challenge video, share with a friend and all that fun stuff. In honor of our new champion Chonk, be sure to leave a like and and subscribe and I will see you later for alligators.